Our next topic is soybean aphids. We've talked a lot about aphids over the last three or four years. They're just a devastating insect in soybeans. And we, we've got a little issue that we need to talk about today. It's what is the right <laughs> threshold? This has been a big debate and uh, Darren and I disagree with a few other people out there in the industry. Well, let's first talk about what a threshold is. And, and uh, there's a concept that with insects in your field, when they reach a certain level, when there's so many of them per plant, then it's time to spray. Because they do enough damage to the crop that economically it causes enough yield loss in order to exactly offset the cost of the spray in the application. So this is really important. These numbers vary every day. You know, you look at the Board of Trade and you say, oh wow, the beans are up 50 cents today. Well, you know what? That just changed my economic threshold out in my field. Now that beans are worth a little bit more, or in the case of this year, you have to look at all these costs and how much damage those insects are going to do. So if soybeans are worth, say, $12 a bushel versus $6 a bushel, a year ago, well, it takes half as many aphids if the price of spray and the price of application remained the same. Well, the price of insecticide has gone up a little bit, but not that terrible much, and the price of application is roughly the same as it was last year. So you have to look at this economic threshold a whole lot different than you did a year ago. In fact, it's going to take about half as many insects to justify treatment in your field. But here's the thing. There are some people out there who are going to tell you that it doesn't matter what the price of beans is. It doesn't matter uh, any, any other condition, how good your crop looks, how much moisture you're having, anything else doesn't make any difference. The threshold's 250 aphids per plant, and we don't care if they give you the insecticide for free. You know what? <laughs> well, no, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> but, but here's the point. I mean, insecticide has come way down. The price this year is even lower than it was a year ago. So when insecticide is about half the price that it was about five years ago, and the soybean price, what the value of soybeans is, is almost triple what it was five years ago. I guess the biggest issue I've got is, how can the threshold still be the same? With every other insect we've got ever, we've always said we look at the price of the crop, we look at how good your potential crop can be, and we look at what the cost of the insecticide plus the application is. So if you look at all those factors, then the threshold would have to be different for soybean aphids than it was five years ago. But a lot of people are saying it's still the same, it's still 250 aphids per plant. We've done a fair amount of research on our farm over the last half a dozen years. We have sprayed on our farm six years in a row. I'm getting tired of spraying for soybean aphids. <laughs> I'm also getting tired of doing treatments. I said last fall we're never doing any more soybean aphid thresholds on our farm because I'm sick of losing yield just to prove that the threshold is much less than a lot of other people think. Okay, well let's just talk about soybean aphids first because if you've got soybeans on your farm this is a big time problem insect for you that you have to keep an eye out for and it's interesting we're in a cornfield today uh, but this particular area of the field is one of the first places that we saw soybean aphids last year and it's a good place to start with our aphid discussion today. When you've got fields with tree belts along them and a lot of times they'll float down right along these tree belts in, in and land in kind of a still tall. protected mm -hmm. area and that's where they'll start. So if you've got a spot like this, uh, make sure you keep an eye on those areas for hot spots for aphids when they first get started in your field. Now the other thing about tree belts is many of the tree belts in the upper Midwest have some buckbrush in them. Buckthorn? Buckthorn, my, my fault, buckthorn in them. <laughs> and buckthorn is where many of the aphids have been found to overwinter. So on buckthorn plants that are in tree belts, keep an eye on insects like soybean aphids right around those belts where they may get started. Well, with soybean aphid, here's basically what we're looking for. In a lot of university tests, uh, you know, they'll, they'll see stuff all across the board. You might see uh, some aphids doing damage at 10 aphids per plant. You might see it at 1,000 aphids per plant. Here's the thing, pretty consistently, we're looking at some university data right out of South Dakota State, and what they're showing for threshold is at the R2 stage, the reproductive stage, or the full flower stage, reproductive stage two, you can probably, with the price of beans today, have less than 10 aphids per plant and justify treatment. Now, the problem and the reason why you see a lot of university data that's all across the board is aphids are not consistent across the field. And also, we don't know what we're gonna have for a crop. Will our beans be 60 bushels? Will they be 30 bushels? It's really hard to know all that stuff and we don't know what's gonna happen with the weather later on and so on and so forth. But the thing is, when you have $12 beans or $15 beans or who knows, some people think we might have a lot higher price, 
within the next year, you want to raise a great bean crop. You can't afford to have insects out there. It's not only the damage that these bugs do to your plant right now, but it's also the fact that anytime a bug feeds on your plant, it opens it up for disease. So if you have aphids feeding now, that might cause some problem. Yes, that might cause some yield loss, but the other thing is that allows disease to set in later and you'll see damaged seeds in the fall. You'll see discolored seeds. You end up losing yield. On our own farm last year where we had very low thresholds of aphids, we were still gaining seven bushels per acre. Seven bushels. So this year, if you lose seven bushels, that's a hundred bucks an acre. A hundred dollars an acre. And to spray insecticide costs like five or six bucks. So it is a very small investment for what you can potentially gain. A couple of things there. When you talk about aphids out in the field, they're going to vary in population. You're gonna have hot spots where there's thousands per plant. You're gonna have areas of the field where there's pockets with virtually none. So it's really tough sometimes to, to go out and scout a field and be able to find these hot spots and then know, okay, I've got one little hot spot, do I treat? Well, there are a couple of things that you want to ask yourself, and, and the first and most important is, do I need to be out there spraying anything else? Because if the answer is yes, I need to go out and spray another application of Roundup, I need to be putting on some fungicide, whatever the case may be, you can throw in insecticide with just about any other application that you're doing and save yourself a trip over the field. And once you start doing those things, you're combining applications, you're going to lower that cost even more, making it easier to justify treatment. Yeah, on our farm, for example, when we're spraying soybean aphids, we'll also be spraying fungicide. Now last year too we had some pretty good gains out of fungicide in soybeans. If we can combine those two things we've saved ourselves a trip, we're gaining good yield and you know what we can do both a half rate of fungicide and the full rate of insecticide for aphids for around the cost of one bushel of soybeans or even less. Okay now don't get confused. Brian said a half rate of fungicide that's, yep. that's a whole different matter. We're using a full rate of insecticide. When it comes to aphids, probably the most common mistake that we're seeing besides not treating soon enough is not using a strong enough rate of insecticide. These are tiny little bugs, yes, but they're all over the plant. They're on the stems, well, they're underneath the leaves. Well, it's not just that. Leaves. It's just that the pyrethroids are not very good on soybean aphids. Lorsban is better, but Lorsban doesn't have as much residual if you use the low rate. So if you're going to go out with something like Silencer or Warrior or Asana, you've got to make sure you're using the higher rate. You can't get by with the lowest rate that will do a good job on bean leaf beetles. That's a different bug. Soybean aphids are tougher to control. Use at least 3.2 to 3.8 ounces of Silencer or Warrior. Use 9.6 ounces of Asana. You You've got to stay up at that higher end use rate if you're going to get all the aphids in your field. So if you've got a number of different insects, say you've got bean leaf beetles and you've also got aphids out there, you say, oh, I've got lots of bean leaf beetles, I've got a few aphids, make sure you're using the rate of insecticide that's going to kill the most difficult to control insect, which would be the aphids in this case. So don't skimp on those rates, don't wait too long to spray, take a look at the economic threshold in your field this year with the price of soybeans and get aphids under control. Well, aphids are really important to control if you're gonna to have top yields, but controlling our weed of the week is important too. We'll show you how to stop it later in the show.